World War I was a global warfare centered in Europe that broke out on July 28, 1914, and lasted until November 11, 1918. The war embroiled the great powers from around the world, consisting of two opposing alliances, the Allies and the Central Empires, Germany and Austria-Hungary. The war dramatically changed the world's economic, political, and social landscape. But this video will try to describe what hygiene was like in the trenches. Although the sanitation and medical issues of World War I were remarkably substandard, the lessons learned during the war helped enhance the conditions and solutions to sanitation and medicine for future generations, both on and off the battlefield. The First World War was one of the most dreadful conflicts in human history, one in which many people lost their lives. During the first few months, war of motion prevailed. However, as late as the end of 1914, soldiers already began utilizing the tactic of trench warfare. Unlike what would happen in the Second World War, the battles did not take place in the cities. The fighting was only between soldiers who were arranged in trenches. This type of warfare was much slower, precisely because of the format used, so this meant more time in a violent and unhealthy environment. Trenches were ditches carved into the ground, usually 1.8 meters wide and 2 meters deep. They stretched out and created huge labyrinths which, after a few months, were found between Switzerland and the northern coast of France. This is how the battles proceeded. The rivals were positioned face to face inside the trenches, spaced out by a meter long strip of land. If one of the sides succeeded in conquering the first trench, the soldiers who had formerly occupied it would return to the other ranks. To absorb bullets, the troops used sandbags in the trenches. Additionally, barbed wire barriers that could be up to 30 meters wide were also a way to fight the enemies. The most violent actions of the First War were the use of mustard gas to kill the rival troops. Estimates are that about 90,000 soldiers have been killed by this. The remaining soldiers were forced to live in appalling hygienic conditions for weeks and even months. Every human being has basic physiological needs, including that of going to the toilet whenever required be it number one or number two. In war, however, this could come either voluntarily or not. To use the toilet in the trenches, soldiers assigned specific areas to serve as latrines. The soldiers would dig two-meter deep pits to relieve themselves. After using these holes, soldiers had other issues, like the numerous flies attracted to the waste. Hence, they built wooden boxes around the pits. The work involved in digging and then maintaining the latrines was so despicable that these tasks were often given to the soldiers as punishment. The smell was likewise abhorrent, so the troops dealt with the stench by trying to cover it with lime chloride. Also, bathroom times could not always be chosen, especially for those who experienced diarrhea due to drinking water contamination. Those who could not use the latrine often resorted to buckets or empty food cans. Of course, this was done in front of everyone else, and then it was time to dump the contents, but not the can, over the trench. Drinking water was a major challenge for the soldiers. They even boiled it to sterilize it, and also added chemicals. But due to crossfire and mishaps, the water was processed far away from the trenches, and taken to the trenches at night for the soldiers' intake. The very worst part was that the transport was mostly done in gasoline cans, which caused the water to taste horribly. When active fighting or other factors prevented the supply of water to the front lines, the troops in the trenches would be left completely deprived. This prompted many soldiers to drink dodgy water simply because they had no other choice and were desperate. They would even drink water from grenade holes, which could contain literally anything, even parts of a human body. Thirst was so strong, however, that the soldiers ventured out. Logically, this resulted in sickness. As garbage, food scraps, and corpses attracted rats, the trenches often became overrun with rodents. There was no proper waste disposal system in trench life. Rats could have a feast. Owing to a large amount of food, the rats would gradually increase in size. According to one story, a soldier spotted one the size of a cat. 
they were so big that they would eat a wounded man unless he could defend himself, wrote one soldier. Not only were the rats a bother, but they spread diseases such as typhus and plague. French troops sought to control the rat problem by leading terrier dogs into the trenches. Catching and killing rats quickly became something to pass the time during the day. Soldiers were offered a reward by the military for killing the rodents as an encouragement to decrease their numbers. Some other soldiers adopted cats instead of dogs, and about 500,000 cats are believed to have helped in the trenches during World War I. Many cats and some dogs served as mascots and hunters for the troops on the front lines. If defecating was already difficult, imagine taking a bath and doing laundry. To increase the resistance of their troops, soldiers rotated in the trenches. Units established facilities away from the front lines that soldiers could use to undress, wash their clothes, and rest. Community baths were also available to clean up the stench they developed while in the trenches. This helped to boost morale and keep many soldiers healthy, but they often had to stay in the trenches for several days without bathing or changing clothes until they were allowed to rest. As a result of dirty bodies and clothes, unsealed latrines, and the smell of corpses and garbage nearby, the trenches and anyone who spent time in them reeked. Soldiers in the trenches not only carried a disgusting body odor, but their irregular bathing and clothing made them attract and spread lice to their fellow soldiers. To feed their soldiers, the Allied troops assembled mobile kitchens and hauled ready-made food to the troops on the front lines. Although the British military required their soldiers to consume 3,500 calories a day, combat often prevented food deliveries. The nourishment that arrived in the trenches was frequently inadequate. British soldiers routinely received rations of canned corned beef, hard cookies, and bread made from dried turnips when wheat ran out. Like the soldiers' sanitized water, shipments often brought meals to the front lines in empty gas cylinders. Flies thrived on the teeming corpses and often fed on the soldiers' food, spreading filth and potentially illness. The rations were also likely to end up soiled due to the weather and transport conditions. If it rained, the trenches would turn into rivers or even a real muddy puddle. Soldiers had to walk through the mud, often getting bogged down. The humidity and inadequate airflow often caused the troops to develop a condition known as trench foot, which resulted in pain, swelling, and numbness in the feet. If the condition were allowed to linger, amputation was the only solution. Once the military figured out the reason behind the condition, they made efforts to require the soldiers to change their socks frequently, move their feet frequently, and rub them with whale oil. Something else that struck the soldiers hard was typhoid fever, caused by an overabundance of lice. From 1915 to 1918, almost 500,000 soldiers of the French, British, and Belgian armies are estimated to have caught the disease. Curbing flea and lice infestations depended on washing the skin, hair, and clothing. However, this was not an option, as soldiers were forced to wait until they were stationed away from the trenches. Far from the entrenchments, armies mounted disinfestation centers to wash and disentangle items of cloth, as well as provide areas for soldiers to bathe and get haircuts to halt the vermin. Sadly, the lice often survived, or the troops were soon infected again due to poor trench conditions. The soldiers spent much of their idle time picking up lice or burning them with candles. What about their teeth? Did they take care of them? Oral health was understandably dire for those who fought in the First World War. Most soldiers neither paid attention to the condition of their teeth, nor visited dentists. Therefore, many already experienced poor oral hygiene before the war. In 1914, many military personnel regarded dentists as useless. But as soldiers developed severe problems due to poor dental care, the dentists started to be sought out. In many cases, army personnel would reject soldiers if they had oral health issues, since the food provided to soldiers in the trenches required good teeth to eat. Those with false teeth were also refused service. But some soldiers who wanted to leave the front took advantage of this rule. Throughout the war, soldiers were stricken with a number of diseases, such as mumps, smallpox, meningitis, and tuberculosis, but none would be as terrible as the Spanish flu. As World War I ended in 1918, the transmission of infectious diseases among soldiers most likely contributed to creating a widespread Spanish flu outbreak. Thought to have started in military camps, Spanish flu quickly spiraled through the training camps to infect much of the world, 
resulting in more losses than those who fought in World War I.